Good day, A. Eh? This is Sedlo, and today I'm going to show you how to do carp. Not that kind of carp, Troy. Okay, I'm in my multi mission trainer where I've got several C 130 uh, things for you to fly. I'm just going to press fly, it's going to get a little noisy right off the bat. I'm going to throw it on active pause. Okay, the first step to um, let you know is I do have a route set out here. Uh, there's a DZ drop zone, which is over the uh, Batumi X. And these are the names that you name your waypoints in the mission editor. Okay, so mine is DZ on the Batumi X. Let's load some cargo. Cargo menu open. I'm going to go cargo. Um, today we're going to drop these CDS crates. So let's uh, just put a bunch of them in there. Five is good, I guess, or six. Um, you can see all of them have been loaded with the GD, sorry, the G12D parachute. There's one uh, parachute on each of them. If you wanted to change that, you just select three. Uh, three is way too much, so we're just going to go back to one. Carp number here, if you want to do multiple carp runs, um, you would do like these ones closest to the door, number one. You could do this as number two, number three, etc. Timer is used for more high altitude drops. It's basically the time from when it leaves the aircraft to when the chute opens. That's my understanding of it. I am not a C-130 driver. Okay, load all of these up here. And they're loaded into the airplane. Now, uh, let's go down to where uh, business gets done. And that is the pilot CNIMU. Sorry, my key bindings are a little off. Um, usually a little more smooth than that. All right, I'm also going to pull up the uh, knee board. Um, hopefully, your hopefully your uh, mission designer has uh, added some carp info for you, like the weather and uh, some of the info here. All right, let's go to the legs page on the CNIMU, and here is our uh, our routing, where we started from. Drop zone is what we're interested in. So on the key to the right of drop zone, we're going to press it. We get to this page. We're going to go MFP. And here is where you can um, set up stuff like uh, landing zone. Uh, if you're doing an off airport landing, you could set up your approach this way. Uh, Moab stuff is here, but we're interested in carp. So we're going to go carp one in it. All right, here's the CNIMU page. We have to fill out the numbers that are boxed here. These are uh, things that you need to do in order to make this work. And today we're gonna go um, left to right, top to bottom. First uh, field here is our length TE, LE to TE, and that means leading edge to trailing edge. So from the start of where you want the first parachute to impact to the end of the zone. Um, Today we're going to use 700 yards. Why is it in yards? I don't know. That's an American plane. LE to PI is the leading edge to the point of impact. So that's from the start of the 700 yards to where you want the first thing to impact. And we're going to call it 100. All right. Slow down distance is SD distance. That means the distance out from the drop zone where you need to slow your aircraft to your release speed. And uh, we're going to go eight. You can do it uh, lower, but you need to be much more aggressive when you slow down. TP distance means turn point distance. That is how far out from the drop zone you need to, uh, this point where you turn onto course or be on course that far out. We're going to say, um, 10. Your run in course is your uh, course, your run in heading basically, the heading you're on when you, uh, sorry, the heading, the course you're on when you drop your stuff. And you could do it either in a magnetic or true. We're going to go 155. It's magnetic. If it was true, you'd go slash whatever. 155 magnetic automatically translated. DZ escape, drop zone escape. Uh, the machine automatically puts 0.5 in here. It's uh, half a mile out from you uh, dropping your last parachute to where you turn 
to escape the drop zone. Um, now, it's already pre-filled out, but you can change it. Like, let's change it to two. See? Done. Next page. Okay, so we're going to need to put in the, sh the shoot type and the am amount of shoots on the thing. Um, an easy way to do this is to go shoot list. And here's the pre-listed types of parachutes this thing can drop. If you select this, all it's doing is putting it into the scratch pad so you don't have to go g-12.t on the other page. It's just a shortcut. Let's go back to Carpenet. And we are going to put this in. Now, if we had... Um, multiple parachutes we'd go gd 12d slash three see but we don't we only have one so let's go back gd dash one two slash one oh yeah why am i keep saying gd g 12 d slash one oh all right, weight and quantity. Now, each of these is 882, and we uh, loaded six. So we go 882 slash six into the scratch pad, and we touch the key here, and it does our math for us automatically. Page two, done. Easy. All right, here's where we put in our weather. Um, we're dropping at 600 feet, but I've put no wind in this mission, so we can go zero slash zero. The uh, temperature at the drop altitude, 600 feet. Now, we know that the uh, weather is 15 degrees at the surface, so let's just change this to 15. Uh, we're 600 feet. Uh, lapse rate is basically two degrees per thousand feet and we're roughly in the middle of that so one degree less than this 14 degrees does it matter i'm not sure surface winds are zero at zero but with winds you can just add zero and it does it automatically for you page three is done easy peasy right all right page four now this is where it gets a little different um the point of impact elevation is 33 feet it took that from the mission um editor uh, where you put the waypoint you can change that but you don't really need to unless you're doing this all without um having waypoints in the mission editor then you'd put it in manually all right um let's just go here obstruction elevation is any uh, trees radio towers within the vicinity uh, I'm going to say 60 feet to have a 33 foot tree around there gives us our minimum drop altitude of 560 feet. Now the autopilot on the Herc is hundred foot increments. So let's just round that up to 600. All right. We don't have to add any uh, info on these here. And then the next page is just, um, how far the the parachute how fast the parachute will be falling when it impacts the ground doesn't really matter to us I'm just going to quickly look up at our cni here or our, our, our hdd and um, it shows you we have this potential route now we've modified it with the carp and we it's in blue so we got to press execute and there it is we're set let's go back into the airplane here we'll unpause it I'm going to get rid of the knee board. I'm going to get rid of the cargo menu. Oh, one thing, if you want, you know, those too low pull up terrain warnings here, uh, we can silence those when we're tactically flying. So we'll go uh, G cause, TAWS, install. And we're going to go from normal to tactical. You'll hear the little bells when we press pop up, inhibit, and terrain inhibit. Inhibit. <laughs> so now you're not going to get those warnings. All right, let's uh, accelerate time a bit. The other thing you need to know is 
sorry, pop it back here. The ramp itself is uh, controlled with the auxiliary hydraulic pump. Let's turn that on now so we are able to open and close the ramp. All right. Uh, you'll note I don't have ray tracing turned on and my settings for graphics are kind of nerfed. Um, I am at the low end of the PC spectrum and uh, when I'm recording a, a HD video, it just it, it struggles a bit. Um, I have a 2070 card. Um, the 20 series is the uh, minimum required card for ray tracing. Um, I can fly with ray tracing on. It looks pretty good, but um, I can't record that way. All right. We're at our turn point here. Coming, or coming up to our turn point, which is the triangle. And that, again, is the, the part where we 10 miles out from the drop zone. And there we go. Start to turn. All right, I'm going to take it out of uh, accelerated time here. And I think I'm going to turn on my track IR. So just bear with me half a moment. All right, we're uh, at our slowdown point. So let's pull this down here. Hmm, there's one thing I forgot to show you on the uh, Carpenet page, and that's on uh, page two. Um, it defaults to a speed of 140. Um, 130 is the max for troops, if we had troops, but we don't. So uh, that's just fine. All right, clear out all these headings here. We're two minutes out. Down here is our aerial delivery panel. And I press this caution here. It puts the light on in the back to let the uh, loadmaster know that we're about to drop. When we are ready to drop, we can press this jump button. Uh, you can bind this to a trigger if you want to let it go manually. Or if you want the computer to drop it for you, you flip this up to auto and it'll do that. All right, 180 knots now. Let's uh, open the cargo bay door that uh, is here. I have it bound, it's already opening. And I'm gonna start putting out a little bit of flap here. I'm gonna say about five degrees. And that will give us a, about four degree, five degree pitch up here for the release. Still slowing down. Now I'm going to take autopilot. manual control. Oh, and the autopilot brought us down to 500 feet. Let's get up here a little bit more. One minute till carp. Oh, that's right. I am. Um, I'm flying in a different build of uh, C-130 today, and uh, I don't have curves on my joystick, so it's a little bit less than I want. So you see the triangles there? Put the triangle on the triangle, and the circle within your flight path marker, and that should get you um, on speed on course. We're uh, almost at release now. 10 seconds out. Five, four, three, two, one. Pickle. All right, red light. We are done. Let's um, put our speed up here. I'm going to close the. Uh, cargo i'm gonna put the flaps up and we are going to escape i love this module i i'm a big fan of uh big aircraft um in flight simulator i used to fly pmdg stuff and uh this is just Check altitude. heaven for me right now 
Sorry, Betty, not today. All right, that's CARP. I hope you learned something, and um, I guess I'll see you all later. Take care.